An exclusive interview. Uh, Stuart, great to see you. Uh, thanks for joining us as, uh, as always. Uh, what exactly does Slack Connect uh, allow you to do that wasn't possible before? Great question. So this is a, an interesting product launch because it's a little bit abstract. It's a fundamental set of technologies. And the way it's showing up for customers is in channels that are shared across organizations, uh, also in direct messages that happen across organizational boundaries. But I think the thing to note here is um, it gives you the, pan, the, the power of channels um, and simultaneously increases the security, um, your ability to, uh, to remain compliant in different regulatory environments. And that's... Uh, that's very unusual because usually there's this trade-off between user experience on the one hand and security on the other. Stuart, we always ask you about the competition with Microsoft. Do you see this as giving you an edge there? Because, you know, the analysts still question how long the growth rate can be for you in the enterprise market with Microsoft so hot on your heels and then so entrenched in the, the business enterprise software world. Yeah, I mean, we definitely look at everything in terms of the, the value that we create for customers. But I think this further, uh, I don't know, accentuates the difference. And, and over the last couple of months, uh, I think there's more evidence from what we've been trying to tell people for a while, which is they're not really uh, comparable products. I don't mean one's better and one's worse. I mean, they're just, they're different. Um, every product announcement from Microsoft is about voice and video calling. And I think if you look at Zoom and, and Slack, this is what happens when you unbundle uh, unified communications. So Zoom is free to take it in uh, a bunch of different directions around webinars and uh, online learning and recruiting. We're taking uh, messaging in a different direction, uh, which goes beyond the one-to-one -one direct message or instant messaging that people are familiar with, moves conversations into channels where there's a lot more transparency and there's a lot more accessibility. Um, and kind of up levels the functionality. So in, in comparison to email, which are static objects, you can't edit them. Slack messages are dynamic. They can include bits of user interface and uh, interactions with external systems that people integrate with Slack. So all that's a bit of a, a mouthful. Um, but what we're doing now is allowing the, that channel-based communication to happen across organizational boundaries where it, it didn't previously. And almost every company, you know, if you have 1,000 employees, there's probably 4,000 people at external companies that you speak with on a regular basis. This is not for you know, unsolicited emails from salespeople. Mm -hmm. This is for ongoing collaboration. But, but is this now making Slack more of a direct rival to traditional email in, in a way that it's, it's always been uh, an alternative more for sort of internal company communication? Does this uh, take this a step further? Yeah. I mean, and the good news is there's nothing to no one loses here. I mean, Slack Connect in, in certain respects is our answer to the question, how could we improve upon email? Um, and how could we improve upon email specifically for external collaboration? Um, you know, we obviously, we've been doing that for internal uh, communication for several years. We have 122,000 customers around the world, large enterprises, small government, corporate, nonprofit, academic institutions, uh, 100 different countries around the world. Um, but this opens up a whole new avenue. And I think the thing to notice is no one loses because if you take those use cases that email supports um, that are better supported in a channel-based messaging platform, uh, you simplify what remains of email. And one of the challenges with email mm -hmm. is that it's supporting so many different use cases. Stuart, what's demand like? Last quarter, I think you added 90,000 customers. What's, what's happened since then as the economies have started opening up in this country? Um, I, I don't have any kind of update for you on, on the numbers. I have to wait for the, the earnings for that. But I would say, you know, kind of stepping back more broadly, it's a really interesting time to be to be running a company because obviously, you know, for companies like ours, there's a big tailwind uh, of increased demand and uh, increased utilization and usage among the existing customers. But as I said, we have 122,000 customers and many of them are small businesses. And when our customers feel pain, we experience it. So I guess one way to look at it is strong tailwinds, there's headwinds, and so that creates a little bit of turbulence. The good news is though, uh, the demand for the product at a fundamental level is unquestionably increased. We've unquestionably advanced down this pathway of inevitability. Um, and as long as you don't believe that the world is on a one-way path to the dark ages or something, there will be a recovery and, uh, and the kind of macro uh, considerations are gradually dissipating. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Stuart Butterfield, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.